So Mike, have you heard of something called an a permanent alternative reality game? Say that again. A permanent alternative reality game. A perp. A a, a, a pug. A parg. A parg. A parg. A parg. Parg. <laughs> I want you to. I want you to be a parg about it. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Please. Please tell me what, uh, what, what this is. Imagine a Dungeons and Dragons session, except done online and you've never met the other people before. Okay. And you've never even met the Dungeon Master. The Dungeon Master is a game developer. Okay. And they release DLCs, changes the plot lines, and uh, as well as set new challenges according to how the community manages to play the last plot line, as well as live events. Okay. Yeah. And how do you know about this blasphemy? Why, what, why do you mean? How do you know this? I play a game like that. Okay. It's like the only game that's class. <laughs> and speaking of class, yeah, this is the as yet undecided podcast, which is not classy. Oh come on! We're not classy, Mike. Well, look at you. You look pretty. You look pretty. I look like a Ramirez mother, but <laughs> not a classy Ramirez mother. No, 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 no. no, no. No, 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 you, you, you dress like you're going to some obscure pub yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yes, yeah, true. No, it, it, it is fluoro night at this random pub. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're just dressed up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, what do you think of that concept, having a permanent alternative reality game in which it's like a Dungeons and Dragons session in which you don't really meet anyone? But you, but you go online to solve puzzles together, and with and um, depending on how you solve the puzzles, you can actually kill people, like NPCs. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's lots of fun. And what game is this? The Black Watchman. Okay. Yeah. The Black Watchman. Yeah. Not the African American Watchman. No, no, no. Black Watchman, as in we work in the shadows to serve the light. Oh, 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 oh. work in the shadows to serve the light. Yeah. What to do in the shadows? What we do in the shadows. No. <laughs> and saying that. Would you play that sort of game? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Why not? Well, I haven't played it yet, so I have no idea. What? Okay. The 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 user interface is very small, so once you get your glasses up. I'll get you cracking on it, but right at this moment, you won't be able to do anything on it. So you can't see anything. Yes. You, you won't be too sure what you're even typing in. Yeah. Well, but in, in saying that, I have it. I have my leave extended till late January now. It's great. Leave for what? No. Well, to survive. Yeah. Because I am on the um, disability allowance. So the disability allowance has been extended till January. Yes. I thought, be, I thought it would be extended for longer. No, well, well because of the way that the system works. Yeah. Um. <laughs> when, okay, when will you be, when will you not be allowed to um, have disability benefits anymore? Like when you get your glasses or? Yeah, that, yeah well, that's my goal. Because I'm sick of doing this as well. Okay. Yeah. So um, once you get your glasses, uh, what will you do then? Get a job? Because you don't have a job offer. <laughs> What you don't what what you need to know about the job offer is that it's not here. Where is it? Hamilton. Damn, I don't want you. Do you would you like to move to Hamilton, the black hole? But well, well, not yet, not yet. Okay, maybe next year, like after you graduate. Yeah, but you because I'm I'm more focused about that more than anything else right now. So go to uni, get your get your students allowance. Are you happy that students allowance has been um increased by fifty dollars a month? No. A week. A week. Yeah. Um, Is, will that be helpful? It, it, it will always be helpful, but in my situation, yeah, I will probably get more than that. But that's oh, okay. Because you're blind, man. Oh, yeah. I have to give you a high five on that. Because you are now speaking to my language. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you, you are adapting the extendedness Dude, we, of this, my voice. The thing is, we were so cl- we. I was constantly hang out, right? You you actually adapted to my language first. You ended up using some of my phrases around your friends, and that's why they're getting a little bit worried about you now. Yeah, yeah. Because they think that you're turning into me. 
<laughs> so I'm just repaying the favor, okay? Okay, good, good. Because I, because I, I always like to say stuff. Yeah. That makes zero sense in a ordinary situation. Yeah. But dude, don't you have some people who are getting worried about you because they thought you're turning into me? No. 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 Okay. Is that a good thing though? That you're becoming more Sophie-ish? No, no, be, be, well, what what we all need to realize, yeah, is that we are we are essentially an average of our surroundings. Yeah. Right. Right. Be, be, because since you have been an influential part of my life over the last year, yeah. Because considering that this is this is podcast number forty now. Nice. So that the, the highest influence you're going to get is from the ones that are closest to you. Yeah. Right? Right. If it's a spouse, if it's a good friend, whatever. Yeah. Right? Or dog. Or dog. Yeah. Or dog. So, yeah. So so essentially, if, if there is a influencer, a influencer in your life, yeah. not an influenza in your life... <laughs> That you that you're going to adapt. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't really call it call it adapt. I would say take the better parts. Yeah. Of uh, of a person's personality and make that sort of your own. Absorb. Uh, yeah, absorb. Assimilate. Assim- uh, integrate. Uh, integrate. Integrate. That's the word. Integrate. Yeah. Yes. But in saying that, integral is probably one of my most favoured mathematical symbols. Integral, yeah. Integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, with that being said, um, shall we open up the pretentious food of the week? Yay, pretentious food corner. Yeah. Yes, I did look in this. Yeah, don't worry about it. And I've actually tried this before. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Organic popcorn. Organic popcorn. Serious popcorn. So... Um, we'll go, so I bought two packets of two different flavors. Uh, so you really? You I've have, tried that one. Mike, you are illiterate. I know, no, but I've tried this one already. Okay, so we have sweet and salty, as well as um, Melbourne sea salt. Melbourne. Uh, uh, the salt from Melbourne. Salt, salt of Melbourne. I believe the salt's from Melbourne. Excuse me. Sea salt. I'm pretty sure the salt's from Melbourne, for some odd reason. It would have been very, it would have been more pretentious. Yeah. If it was Himalayan salt. No, no, Melbourne salt is the most pretentious salt in the world. <laughs> it's even more pretentious than Himalayan salt because you know the Himalayas they do have a lot of salt. Whereas H- Melbourne, they don't have that much. Where's my Melbourne salt land? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's wrong. Okay. Where's my Melbourne salt land? Melbourne salt lamps are too expensive, that's why you only ever see them in food, and that's why you can have Himalayan salt lamps, because they're, they're a little bit less pretentious. You can also get... Really? Yeah. Melbourne salt is actually the most pretentious salt you can probably get in the world. Um, Hi- Himalayan salt, I saw a slab of Himalayan salt the other day at Pharaoh's. It's about this thick, and it's the, about the size of an A4, A3 piece of paper. An A, okay. Yeah. Slabs of it. You can get slabs of um, Himalayan salt, whereas you can't get that in Melbourne, because it's just not enough. That's why Melbourne salt is the most pretentious salt in the world. Okay, this again. How'd you open this? It is that pretentious that Sophie can't even open it. I might open it for me. So, I'm trying out the sea salt. Oh yeah. Mildly salty. Oh yeah. That's the coconut sugar in it, so if I end up vomiting, you know why. <laughs> you you may get your bucket. No, I'll be fine. I'll just vomit into the i I'll just vomit into the um packet. What's the deal with organic food not tasting like anything at all? That tastes alright. This tastes pathetic. Pathetic? Mm-hmm. Really? This, this Organic food tasting pathetic. Sweet and salty. You admit it yourself. Yeah, I know. I like this one. It's, but it needs to be a little bit sweeter. Do you prefer sea salt or the sweet? Do you prefer the sea salt or the sweet and salty? I prefer the least pretentious one. 
Which is? The sea salt one. Why is sweet and salty even more pretentious than sea salt? Because they're adding more stuff to it. Okay. I think the sea salt ones are slightly healthier because it's not no sugar. It's just, yeah. it's just popcorn and a little bit of salt. Oh man. This looks good. So, in saying that. Oh. Considering that we are winding down. Oh, Mike, this is funny. Okay, once okay, servings per package is one, only ninety kil, only ninety calories, yes. and the the sweet and salty one only has five more calories. It's made with organic corn as well as organic coconut. No artificial nasties, uh, no GMO, um, gluten free, dairy free, da da da. Does it have? Does it use organic salt? Yes, has they have to, otherwise it can't be organic. As you're saying. Because since we are winding down. For what? Um, it's, it is November when we are recording this. Yeah. So, in saying that, since this is episode 40. Yeah. We have to talk about 2017 in general. Shouldn't we do that next month? Well, if you want to. Yeah, like one of those retailers who actually put up the sign, the Christmas signs in October. Oh yeah, what's your take on that? I hate it. Why do you hate it? Because I get Christmas fatigue by the time Christmas rolls around. And that just ruins Christmas in general. So what do you think of the fact that, you know, you know, we, we are having stuff early and earlier. Yeah. Oh, well, good stuff, like Christmas. Yeah. And, like, we are, we are changing things from birthdays. Yeah. To birth weeks. To birth months. Wait, what? Yeah. People have birth months. They're not talking about their birthstones, are they? No, no. No, they, they, they want to celebrate their birthday month. How? By the month of their birth, Yeah. they celebrate all of it. How? Like being really happy, go, oh, my birthday's soon. la di da di da Okay. Right? You can't party all month. I've tried that once. <laughs> I can't even party for two weeks. I have to have a big long sleep in between. Mm. Um, well, the, you, you know, you know, that's that's the liver damage for you, but never mind. <laughs> um, and it's oh, uh, do you prefer the sweet and salty or the sea salt? I, I, I prefer the sea salt one. All right, I'll, I'll stop eating that one. Um, yeah, is it because is that we need happiness in our lives because of all of the of the sh of the crappiness in the world? No, I think it's just consumer culture. So the shops, they're trying to find more, more excuses for you to spend money with them. Okay. That's my take on it. Considering that you've... Have you worked in retail before? No, but you have. I have. So what's your take? We actually get the stuff months before. But you store them. Like you get your Christmas trees in July or something. Yeah, yeah it would be like August. Yeah. No, like, like all of the chocolates, everything, we get it around August. Right. And it's just sitting in the stock room. Yeah. Why do you get them in so early? It's not our fault. Right. It's, it, it is the retail chain's fault that we get it so early. Why do they think it's better to get it so early? Because they need to move stuff out of their warehouses into the shops. So it takes that long to do that? Yeah. Wow. So like like what one would think is that all of the uh, out of the all of the Christmas stuff mm -hmm. it is made about a year before. Wow. Before you put it into your mouth. It must be weird working in the warehouse like um in July, in July or something or August because you'd be like surrounded by Christmas things. It's about as further away from Christmas as you can get. Yeah, and and that's why you know with with big toy outlets especially in New Zealand. Yeah. Like um, warehouse and when I and came out, mm. which I used to work at, they would generally have toy sales around about that August time. Yeah. Because they can't, they can't fill the stock. Yeah. Because they're making room for all of the Christmas stuff. Ah, that's clever. Didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Be because they call it a big summer blowout or something. Because more than likely, 
you're not going to hold it out till Christmas. You're going to give the presents to the kids mm. beforehand, which means that you have to buy more presents for Christmas. Yeah. Which makes zero sense for me, but it increases profits for them. Wait, you, wait till you have a whiny kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's like driving in a gorge. Which, yeah. which, Sophie, please don't right now. Why? Considering that you've told me about your horror stories about your driving. Yeah. Please don't drive in a gorge at the moment. I know. I know. Yeah. Hey, um, do you think in the, do you think Steam ever has um stock problems? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know there are, I, don't, I know that Valve is a mainly internet company, and Steam is basically based on servers. But do you think they ever have stock problems? Like, I know they have connectivity problems, especially around about um, sales time, in which um, games download basically drops way to nothingness because everyone's on it. Um, no, no, seriously. Steam sales are legendary. Twice a year, you get um, games at ninety percent off, triple A games at ninety percent off, as well as serv as as well as hourly server crashes from overloading. Yeah, but it's. <laughs> It's it's more due to the server issues rather than key issues. Which what are the key issues? I mean, like key like number issues. Yeah. So so like. So you're saying that Valve actually has crap servers? No, no, no. I'm saying that everybody has has server issues. Oh yeah. So like you already know mm. that when a new game comes out. Yeah. You already know that the servers are going to crash. Yeah. You automatically know that. Yes. You would think that a company that is worth billions and billions of dollars, and I'm not talking about Steam. Yeah. I'm talking about the publishers. Yeah. That they would have enough servers allocated to that time. Oh, so Steam, no. oh, so Steam is like a crossroads. They're not the place where you download them. No. Oh, I see. So you mean like uh, when we're down... I mean, I always knew that for Ubisoft games that we download them via Uplay, yeah. not Steam itself. But I didn't quite realize that for the other games. I thought they actually store. I I thought they actually use the Steam servers to download the games. But no, Steam is the Steam server is more like a um, a train station. Yeah. Rather than, rather than a shop. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um. Steam is a go-between. Aye. So you, so as you're saying, you'd think that the companies, which are literally worth billions of dollars, like Activision, Rockstar, they know they know that if there's going to be a Steam sale slash new game release, surely they would have reinforced their servers by then, right? For that. Yeah, yeah but they don't. Why not? <laughs> you could probably get away with it, right? Yeah, well, well, yeah. It's the way that you because they they assume. Yeah. That you are going to have that many servers for the lifetime of the game. Yeah. So, it's like buying a freehold home. Yeah. No, renting a freehold home. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? No. You pay rent. Yeah. Over the life, the like, like you, you like. Okay. Classic example. Mm. It happened. It happened in Auckland. About 98, I think, mm -hmm. from memory, um, where the 100-year 100, 100 leases were running out. Yeah. And, and that's why, um, like, a lot of the rents were cheap, because yeah. they, they were running at the end of the lease. Yeah. That, due to inflation, mm -hmm. were very low. Yeah. So they were getting rid of all of their leased property. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as they go into another hundred year lease, yeah, the start the start price of the lease would be extraordinarily high. Yeah, because it will be the same price mm -hmm. for the hundred years alone because of inflation. Mm -hmm. At the start, it'll be very high. Yeah, but inflation wise, at the, at the end of the hundred years, will be very low. Yeah, same thing with servers. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of people going onto the certain servers yeah. for that period of time. It's going to make it crash. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the cycle, hardly yeah. anyone's going to use the servers. Can't they... Well, must they actually program a server in a way to dedicate it to one game? Because can't they actually have, you know, like, um, 
backup servers for their games. So for example, they for example they know they know there's um okay. Let's just say that you technically did you technically dedicate five servers to a game, but why don't you have like ten servers that can be dedicated to any game that's about to be released? So that's um at the time of release there will be fifteen servers up and running for that particular game. But as the popularity runs out, you can just take one take the servers down one by one and repurpose them to another game. Can't they do that? Okay, okay. I, I, I will give you the best, best example ever. Yeah? Alright? Is there something I'm missing? Okay. Peter and the Wolf, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, we went to Peter and the Wolf. Or tried to. Tried to. Yeah. And the power went out. Yeah. Of the, of the entire building. Yeah. They had two backup generators, both of them failed. Yep. Like you can you can say to them, oh, why don't you have three backup servers, mm. or four back, or, or four backup generators? Yeah. But it's just not feasible. So they can't have back. So they can't have extra servers to dedicate to, to dedicate to popular games. Why not? I mean, this is this difference between having extra servers and having um, no, there's a big difference between having backup servers failing. And just not having enough backup servers. Yeah, you can say the same thing about the play. Mm. They did have enough backups. They did have enough backup generators. It's just a just damn plain bad luck that those two <laughs> backup ser- backup generators failed. But in our case, it's almost as if the game developers don't even have the backup generators. But it's this. It, it is the same issue. Why is it? Oh yeah. So like sometimes no matter what happens, you just can't have enough servers. Yeah. But here's another thing, though. Unlike power cuts, um, server use can be calculated quite accurately. Not really. Really? Yeah. But then again, if you see get a game that's going to sell quite, but then again, surely they can through predictions of previous game sales, they can actually know how many people are going to log on to the servers. You would think that. Mm-hmm. But no. <laughs> are they too stupid? Stupid? No. Or is it too random? No, no, because they want to maximise profit. Yeah. So what they do mm. is that they deliberately yeah use as little servers as possible mm-hmm. to be because they will be renting it from a particular company. I see, like Amazon. Or, yeah, yeah, or another server company mm. that specialises in that. Yeah. So they want to pay as little server time as possible to get the, to get as maximum of profit as possible. Oh, I see. Even if you do microtransactions, which, funny enough, you, using <laughs> um, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh my god! <laughs> and <coughs> they're not putting it in anymore. Oh man! Due to the outrage. Oh, did you did you see the Reddit that? The Reddit in which they did as a reply to the criticism of oh, the... No, oh, yeah. oh, oh, are you talking about the, the, worst, loop. the worst downvoted post of all time? Yeah, yeah. 27,000. No, no. Was it? 20? 668,000. Wait, last time it was 27,000. Now it's at 600. Negative 6,000 points? Yep. Negative 600,000 points, I mean. 600,000. Negative 600,000 points. That basically wins mm. the worst... Re- the worst... Da- Worst Reddit post by Country Mile. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, like, even because of that post, yeah, they decreased the um, time it takes to earn a hero by seventy five percent. Mhm. And even with that, mm-hmm. their sales dropped. Yeah. Their EA stock price went down two and a half percent. Wow. So just don't do loot boxes, okay? Don't do pay to win models. Otherwise, you get. Otherwise, you are going to actually lose money now. Yes, and we are getting to the point that people are getting sick of them, and to get and adding loot boxes will no, no longer make you money. In fact, it'll do the, all the opposite. It, it, even now, yeah. when there is a um, a game. Yeah. That, uh, uh, it was a free to play mobile game. Yeah. Called Clickster Heroes. Yeah. That it will be. It is now not free to play. Yeah. They are putting a one uh, of uh, a one-off price of twenty-five dollars. Yeah. For a mobile game. How long is the game? I don't know. 
I guess here's the thing, if it has like 25 hours of play time, well then you could say that through the $1, one hour model, it's worth it. Yes. Yeah. But, but mobile games are usually not 25 but, hours. Yeah. who wants to pay $25 for a mobile game? I don't know. Some um, some rich bastards paid $999 for an Apple app just to show they're rich. No. The app was called I Am Rich, and I think like two or three people actually paid it just to say that they're rich. Now, because, because, because you know, you would get those people that want to try the game as, as long as they can. Yeah. Get that free thing. Mm. But there are people who they use code name as sharks. Yeah. That want to pay yeah. as much money as possible to get as forward as they possibly can. I've heard they're called whales. Oh, yeah, shark, whales. Same thing. Large marine animal that eats everything. Yeah, and like I put a status on there before mm. um, EA reduced it yeah. by 75% and, mm. and now not putting in microtransactions in there. Mm. Um, it was going to either yeah. going to take you 2,100 hours of gameplay yeah. to unlock everything. And 400 hours to even get the chance to unlock Darth Vader. No, I mean to get everything. Yeah, I said 400 hours to e get the chance to unlock Darth Vader. Oh, it was 40. 40 hours. Yeah. I thought I read someone's 400. Maybe I add an extra zero somewhere in my me in my head. Or it was going to cost you $3,000. Yeah. Why are we always talking about microtransactions? This is the third podcast in which we discuss microtransactions on a... Because it keeps coming up. And we hate it! It keeps coming up. It just keeps up for you. So, 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 like, you have to strike a balance. Yeah. Um, like, it'll, it'll be nice if, yeah. you, you know, you had to work to get the characters. Yeah. Fine. 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 Just don't make it ridiculously difficult. Yeah. And don't give the people who are rich an even a large advantage. Or, like, like, like even, you, you know, pay for skins. Yeah. Right? It's, it's completely cosmetic. It's not yeah. pay to win. Yeah. I will say that the way that Destiny 2 did it was a little bit horrible. Yeah? Well, um, how did they do it? Um, like, you had to pay per colour. Pay per colour and pay per part. Yeah. So, instead of, so instead of a one-off payment to have your suits uh, magenta, you have to pay for the arm, pay for the hand, yeah. pay for the forearm, pay for the chest, pay for the breast, yeah. pay for the legs, pay for the four legs, back legs. Yeah, welcome to KFC. May I take your order? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh yeah, and don't forget to um, censor the previous podcast because I managed to put an F-bomb in there. I know. To, your, to, a complete sh to your complete shock. I know. Why were you so shocked? Because you don't swear. Really? You hardly swear. You even tell, you even tell me off for swearing. Yeah. Even without, a, you know, having a microphone in my face. <laughs> yeah, I know. You tell me off without it. <laughs> yeah. But you, oh well, that's hilarious, your reaction, I was like, it was, like, huh? that's why I don't swear, so that when I do swear, I get, I get to see other people's reactions, and I, I enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or else if you mean, you hear me swear, yeah. I get told off the high hill. Yeah, whereas, whereas, whereas if I swear, people are too shocked to tell me off. Yeah. They just, they're like, uh? 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 What's that, what have you done? Yeah, 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 just like an as yet undecided, we ask the real questions like, Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to microtransactions. So, so what's your take on microtransactions? Where should the limits be? It, sh it should be, yeah, yeah, it sh just should be purely cosmetic. Yeah. Me too, like, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, well, even then with purely cosmetic, you, st you still get an, an, an advantage. Camo, for example. No, 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 it's, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. So, for me, um, yeah, I'm saying as well, like, if you have microtransactions as, say, cosmetic, and doesn't give you any advantage, apart from the fact that it makes you look silly, and therefore people are too hard, too, and therefore people are too busy laughing to shoot at you, well, then, yeah, who cares? Yes. Um, but, um, would you say, would you say that microtransactions can be considered gambling? 
Oh, okay. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about microtrans... Well, no, sorry, not microtransactions. Loot boxes. Now... Oh, no, well, it, well, it doesn't really matter. And I'm talking I, about loot... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, let me just clarify. I'm talking about loot boxes in which you pay for them. Like, if you, if you earn loot boxes through playing the game, yeah. well, then that's not gambling because you're, you haven't paid any money for it. But the definition of gambling is when you input money to get a chance to either win back some money or lose some money. Yeah. Or, or get or gain like a random prize they may or may not want. So, would you consider loot boxes gambling? Paid loot boxes, I mean. Okay. Um, firstly, yeah? you have to think about what happened with the CSGO lotto debacle. Oh, what happened with that? I've, I've heard that there's something wrong with Counter-Strike, but... Didn't really hear much about um, it. Because of the drop rates of particular skins yeah. being so high, um, they would use that as a lottery system. Yeah. Um, it was it was third party. It had nothing to do with Valve. Oh my god! So so once again, Valve got screwed. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Like remember the house? Someone completely ripped off. Uh, Dota 2, like we didn't bother changing anything. No, no, no. For no, the mobile no. game, it, it, it was, it was way under that. So, um, so anyway, someone decided to rip off um, CS:GO, and this has nothing to do with Valve. Let me repeat, this has nothing to do with Valve. It's not the developer's fault. This is some third-party schmuck. Yeah, they used a third-party a- a- API system. Yeah. Um, which, not only did they make. Yeah. They used. Um, Who's they? Not Valve. The not valve. Who is that? Yeah, yeah, the not valve guys. The not valve guys. Yeah. Um, not only did they develop this program. Yeah. They actually did the Kardashian thing that we talked about in the previous podcast. Which is. Um, they they didn't put ads on it. They said it was a non ad. Even though it wasn't ad. Even though they owned the company. Oh yeah. So it was a third party. D- API. How do they manage to infiltrate CS:GO, even though it's not their game? Well, the, well, there was a way to to open it. Uh, so, are you saying that CS:GO was um, vulnerable to hacking? Yes. They literally hacked the game. In a nutshell. So let's just say. So, how did the hack? It, so, what did the hackers do to make it into a lottery? They they used the person's information. Yeah. And to get their skins, yeah, and use it using the user's permission, yeah, to use those skins, yeah, that were worth a lot of money because of the odds of getting that particular item, yeah, into a uh, to to use it as a lottery card. So, say you had a particularly valuable skin, yeah. What does that do? To, what does that do to so, the lottery card? Okay, so you would use it, like for instance, there were forty tickets in a raffle. Yeah. Right. Right. And you, you know that that expensive skin. Yeah. Would be allocated to a larger proportion of those forty tickets. So, so say that you have a particularly expensive skin, you suddenly get ten tickets out of forty. Yes. And if you had a common skin, you only had one ticket. Yes. And what's that raffle? And and uh, do you sell the skins to get raffle tickets, or? Yeah, well, well, you would use that. Yeah. Into the raffle. Yeah. And it will randomly select. Yeah. A particular number out of that forty. Right. And the winner gets all of the all of the skins. All the skins, okay. Yeah. And do the hackers earn any money out of this? Oh yeah, like they, the, like the people that ran it yeah. got millions. How do they? How how do they make money? Because there was a way to allocate particular items within Steam yeah. for money. So they were gaming the lottery in the way so that they would win most of the time and they were then on selling the skins. Yes. Um, what has Valve done about it? Um, well, Valve has completely closed that loop. Oh, yeah? And the, the Commerce Commission got involved yeah. and they were given a warning. Okay, say so don't be a dick again. Don't be a dick again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The hackers were told not to be a dick again. Yeah. But wouldn't it be um, a violation of the terms of service to hack a game? Yes. 
surely Valve would have taken them to court or something. Well, it hasn't gone that far yet. Valve is chill. Yeah, yeah. Most developers would have would have just taken them to court in the snap. Yeah, but it, it's because that Valve realised yeah that they had opened the gap yeah, but so so they did nothing about it. So they think it's partially their fault. Yeah, it's even even though that even though it. <laughs> Just because you can do something, just because you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Because honestly, honestly though, um, just, just because, because just because there's a loophole doesn't mean that you should always take the loophole. You know, you, I mean, Valve has every right to basically take them to court because they did they they literally did hack the game and they did compromise the game. Well, I can't believe you're so chill. <laughs> yeah, because they don't want any bad press. They wouldn't them. get any. I sure, surely they wouldn't get any bad press. Because somebody da- hacked their damn game! It's, it's, not, it's not them. It's not on... I mean... It's a bit like I, Justin and I didn't regretting saying that um, Donald Trump might have mistaken her for um, Trudeau's wife. For Trudeau's wife. It's not on her! It's on Trump! But so that's actually quite funny. Yeah, that's funny. It's funny. But I find it... I find it's just so sad that people just assign blame to themselves even though it's technically not, it's technically not their fault. Yeah. I mean... It's not Valve's fault that they had a slight that they had a slight loophole in the in the game system, and someone decided to exploit it for their own game, fun and profits. And it's not Justin Ardern's fault that she that she got that um, Donald Trump was sexist enough not to remember who who's who. It's not on them. It's not on them. It's not on them. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Valve Valve has every right to actually sue those hackers, okay? Because you don't. Just because you can, well, it's a bit like you destroying your sister's science project. But in saying that, yeah. Happy birthday, sister! I know your birthday's tomorrow as we're recording this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> happy, bir- happy birthday, Laura. Anyway, it's a bit, anyway, Mike. It's a bit like you destroying your sister's pro- science project just to win. Yeah, but <laughs> the one thing that you would know about my sister. Yeah. She wouldn't make a science project. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Science project. Let's just say that you get there. Let's just say that you and your sister entered a competition, and it was and it wasn't against the rules for you to destroy your sister's pro to, you, to destroy your sister's um entry 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 fee, and then you decided to destroy your sis, sister's thing to win. Even though it's not against the rules, don't you think that you're still a bit of a dick and you shouldn't have done it in the first oh, yeah. place? Oh yeah. It's the same thing with I hackers. Admit. I admit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes. I was a dick. But yeah. Saying that sometimes she was a dick too. Hey, that's a, hey, that's the nature of being siblings, you know. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah. You know. Oh my God! I mean, those hackers. I mean, why would Valve even let them go? Oh, that reminds me. Um, we will make this our last topic because I think I think I see you're very tired now. What do you think happens to people who accidentally destroy pu- exp- very expensive artwork in the public setting? When it, Emphasis on accident. It's a completely different story if you intentionally destroy something. Yeah. But if you accidentally destroy it, like, you, like you accidentally walked into it. Like it was a sculpture and you accidentally walked into it. What do you think happens? It'll take, it'll go under the, the art gallery or the museum's insurance policy. Yeah, and what happens to the person who accidentally destroyed it? You, you know, the only thing you you could do is yeah. apologize. Nothing. Nothing happens to them. In yeah. fact, in fact, the, in fact, what happens is that the art the art gallery afterwards actually say that dude, it's not your fault. You don't need to apologize. Um, you're welcome to come back. Yeah. And uh, we're not going to blame you nor hold you to anything to it. We know we know it's in the public place, and we know that accidents happen. Yeah. Stuff happens. Yeah. We we'll, we we'll, and besides, we also art gallery also say that we have a restoration team that will, that will fix it, and the art will be back in a few days. No one would have ever known that it was ever um damaged. Yeah. It, or it, destroyed. It's it's one of those external things. That yeah. There is a possibility of it happening. Yeah, and that and that's why they're prepared for it. Yeah. So um, what? So what? So the most like, so the most that would ever happen is that you receive a letter asking you to politely not come back for the next few months. Yeah. Like that. Like that's all. Like you just 
don't go back for the next few months. Not even a permanent ban. Yeah. So it's just, like, like, like for instance, that's the most that would happen. And the most likely thing that would happen is the art gallery would say, it's not your fault, don't worry about it. Like, like, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we won't make the, we won't, and we'll publicize this incident. You, won't, you, won't, you don't even need to be embarrassed. Okay, yeah. I'll, I will give you another example. What? Yeah? Um, there is a golf hole yeah? in, in, in the course back home. Yeah? Where if you hit an errant shot, you have to, there is a road leading to the beach yeah? that may cross and line up with the ball. Yeah? There has been instances where a ball has hit a car. Yeah. While it's been travelling on the road. Right, nice. Right? Yeah. Whose fault is it? The person who designed the damn golf course. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, like for instance, I haven't hit a car. Yeah. But I've hit plenty of balls over that fence, onto the road. Plenty I mean, of time. I mean, if that happens, then you have to, you have to admit the person who designed the golf Golf course is stupid. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you got, if something like that, if something like that easily happens, then you have to blame the, they blame the designer because they're the ones that designed it for it to yeah. happen. You know, so who designed it? Well, well, well. Let's just say it was done a hundred years ago. Was the road there first, or was the golf course there first? Road, oh, the golf course, oh, wait, wait, I have to think, the road was there first. Whoever designed the golf course is an idiot. If the, if the golf course was there and then the road decided to cut through it, then it's the president who designed the road that was an idiot. No, no. Why would you actually put something on the direct path of danger? Now, I have the premises for something that Sophie may not understand. Yeah? Be... <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to ask, uh, l l like the golf course that you have probably been to, yeah, would not be in the calibre, yeah, of the of the particular golf course. Yeah, it was probably there because they had a plot of land and they decided to put some golfers in there. Yeah, pretty much. But if you're going to do things, you may as well do it properly. Otherwise, you could you may as well have never done it at all. Now, okay. Now, would you rather do something 80% of the time? Yeah. Even though you accept that it's not going to be 20% or you don't do it at all. What do you mean? It, it, like, like doing something, doing something that is 80%, not 100% of your power. Yeah. Just say that you did it. Yeah. Or not doing something at all. Thinking that, yeah, you're 80, thinking that your eighty percent isn't good enough. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done it. Otherwise, it's just be a wasted effort. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like. It's a. It's a bit like. Um, sometimes you just need to reach a certain threshold for it to be done. Otherwise, if you don't do it, you you just. I mean, do you get into the Olympics for? Not quite crossing over the bar. I mean, if you jump, I mean, if you jump up to, I mean, if you jump up um, to cross the wall, and you only jump up 80% of the wall, can you still get over? No. If not, and you only get up to 80% of the wall, then it's still wasted effort. It's okay, just wasted okay, effort then. Okay, okay then, then what do you think about those particular people Yeah. that... That will not win. Yeah. But they are just happy that they're there. Such as, like, and uh, like in a sporting sense. Yeah, yeah, like in a sporting sense, that. They know they can't win a particular cup, but they're just happy to be, at the sh at a shot yeah. to win the cup. Yeah. You, they're not making any effort at all. Then, then it's not wasted. You can't waste effort they don't make. Okay, but uh, you, you know, you know, someone's. Someone's a hundred percent effort yeah. may not be a hundred percent somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Then if they don't cross a certain thr threshold, well then, that's that. They, okay. they just don't do it. Okay. Otherwise, you you you're better off spending your time on on other things. Okay. You know. 
And with that, I think we just hit the 45 minute mark. Oh man. No, not quite the 45 minute mark, but I think we just reached a, we did reach a certain threshold of podcastiness. 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 If this is the Asiate podcastiness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I haven't yet decided on what threshold of podcast we should be. Shall we be low tier, high tier? No tier? No tier. Yeah, no tears running down my eyes. Ah! And no tears running down my paper. Oh. Ooh. And no tears running down my eyes. Oh. You know, yeah. Mike, what, what, Mike, Mike, there is a tear running down your eye. But. It's been glued. Yeah. Shut. There is a tear. There is one tear. <laughs> and it's not salty. <laughs> it's not salty. It's uh. It's not even sweet or salty. It's it's a no. It is a type of tear that will take you away, far away from the ocean, into the ocean from the beach. <laughs> it's a rip tear. It's a rip tear. <laughs> oh my goodness, puns everywhere. <laughs> so you can contact us with your local delicious. Marine puns at as your undecided podcast at gmail.com or you can um, comment on Mike's eyes at the manus <laughs> because it's currently full of tears. That's why he doesn't have glasses right at this moment, even though he's supposed to be. You're supposed to have glasses by now. You said you get glasses in November. Wait, 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 wait. But stuff happened. Wait, you got yeah. more tears. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just say that the appointment has been deferred. Okay. Right at this moment, you have tears for fears. Have a good week. Hey, you're supposed to... Hey, what's my handle? Sophie9709. Have a good week now, guys. <laughs>